It's now time to check in with Coindesk Global Policy and Regulation Managing Editor Nick Day, who is also editor of Coindesk State of Crypto Newsletter. The Lawrence loves to call an absolute must-read, and I completely endorse him on that. Good morning, Nick. Hey, good morning. All right. Uh, in just a few minutes, I'd say, uh, the SEC Chair, Gary Gensler, is set to testify. Uh, this is going to be a hearing that is entitled Oversight of the Securities and Exchange Commission. What are you expecting? Good question. Um, so, yes, that's happening uh, in about 20 minutes or so, I believe. The House Financial Services Committee uh, will be talking about the SEC. Um, Republicans, who are currently the majority on the committee, just released a letter basically right. criticizing Gensler's approach to uh, crypto specifically, arguing that crypto assets have multiple uses, not just investments, and so uh, trying to force both issuers and intermediaries like exchanges into you know, national securities exchange frameworks don't really work. Um, this is obviously something that Gensler has kind of, he's disagreed with in the past. Um, you know, in his view, uh, crypto exchanges should register as national securities exchanges and, you know, possibly other things, brokers and clearing houses, depending on what kind of activities they support. So, you know, I think we're about to see some uh, fundamental ideological differences on display here where you have, on the one hand, the chairman of the SEC arguing that cryptos do look like securities and therefore issuers should register, exchanges should register. And on the other hand, you might have some lawmakers who say, uh, it, you know, it's not quite that simple. They shouldn't have to register. Or at the very least, if there's a registration uh, framework, it should be updated to allow for crypto. Nick, what do you make of this uh, latest comment by Brian Armstrong at Coinbase about, you know, the, the threat to leave the United States? <laughs> um, I'd be interested to see if it happens. I mean, you know, Coinbase has always been a U.S. company. I'm not sure what exactly its numbers are, but my question is, would Coinbase be willing to give up on a U.S. client base? And uh, unless its overseas businesses are making up enough revenue to offset the costs of operating, uh, or sorry, the cost of, you know, cutting out the U.S. business, uh, I'd be a little skeptical, but I am talking to Coinbase as Paul Greenwald next week, so I imagine this is something that I might, you know, uh, ask at consensus now. Yeah. All right. Okay. So I think uh, what I wanted to ask was about Bittrex. Uh, uh, we're also seeing some action there, uh, a statement from Bittrex coming in uh, a few hours ago. Also, what's going on there? What's the latest move uh, in this entire conversation around regulation by enforcement? Yeah. I mean, you know, um, Obviously, you had uh, Jason on earlier um, talking about this case. Uh, what, to me, I think is the important part is we've seen the SEC uh, previously settle with an exchange called Biaxi. It wasn't a very big exchange. It didn't have a lot of volume or anything. But a lot of the charges are similar to the ones we're now seeing made against Bitrex, you know, namely that uh, Biaxi and Bitrex are operating as unregistered national securities exchanges, brokers, and clearinghouses. And... Um, I imagine this is going to be kind of almost another preview of the Coinbase case, right? So uh, these are, I I really wouldn't be surprised if we see similar charges if and when the SEC files against Coinbase. Now, uh, All right. what that means for the Bitrex case is, um, you know, if Bitrex fights this, uh, we'll probably see more about how the SEC is going to approach this and what the arguments it makes actually are. So basically, we're going to be following court cases for the next, what, two, three years, Nick? Probably longer than that, to be honest, but yes. Nick will always be working. Wow. All right. <laughs> All right. Okay. Thank you, Nick. Uh, always a pleasure. That was Coindesk Global Policy and Regulation Managing Editor, Nick Day. And uh, don't forget to sign up for the State of Crypto newsletter on coindesk.com, authored by Nick.